In this lesson, we'll create a gallery. We're going to use the table layout and image swapping in order to create a, a visually pleasing gallery. The first stage, we've already created a site to hold our gallery. The site can be seen here, and the name of the site is here. This will contain the folders and the images and the files for the gallery. The next stage is to create a new HTML file. I've got one open, but I'll close that one and I'll create a new one. So you can either create by going to create new and HTML, or you can go to file, new, new document, HTML, give it a title, gallery show, make sure it's HTML5, there should be no attached CSS, and all you need to do then is create, click create. That opens a new page for you. The next stage is to set up the layout of the page. So we're going to insert a div to hold the to hold the entire gallery on the page. Make sure you're clicked in the body of the page. Go to insert HTML and div. The insert div box will come at, and it will the first point is insert at insertion point. Leave that as it is and click new CSS rule. So we'll open up the new CSS rule box. We're going to create a style for this box. So the first thing we need to do is the selector type we're looking for is an ID. Select ID. The name for this area is, it's going to wrap around the entire page layout. So we're going to call it wrapper. It's going to wrap around the entire layout. So just give it the name wrapper. This style is only for this document only. So click OK. It now takes you to the CSS rule where you will style the actual area of the page. The first thing you need to do is select a background. I'm going to click create a moody background in black. So click black. And then we're going to create a box area to hold the gallery. So we're going to give it a width of 1002 pixels, giving it a height of 600. Can you go to the margin area? We want this box to be centered on the page. So when you get to the margin area, select the top one and click auto. Now what that does is it basically sets auto for the top, right, bottom and left margins, which will help the particular air, uh, layout sit in the middle of the page. So <coughs> click OK once that's complete. As you can see in the insert div, you now have an ID wrapper and it will apply the appropriate styling to that area. Just click OK. So you've got the basic layout of your page ready. It's a div box sitting in the right place and it's centered and it's ready to hold your gallery or whatever else you want to put on that page. Um, we'll move on to the next part, which is creating the table layout for the gallery. In this section of this lesson, we're going to create the gallery layout. It's very simple. We're going to use a table uh, and make it one by three. So that's the next part of this lesson. Click, make sure you're clicked inside the wrapper. If your screen is not split, okay, design live, right, design, right, if your screen is not split, then split it so that you can see the white area which shows you what's happening on the page and the black area which shows you what's happening in the code. And what you want to make sure is that you are within the div area, the wrapper area. So if you look down in your code, you see div ID, this area here, div ID wrapper. Within that, you've got some words that say content for ID wrapper goes here. Just delete that. And then in, at this point, you're going to insert a table. To insert the table, click insert, table. The table box comes up. You want a table that is actually three, two rows by three columns. That will help us get to where we're going. The table should be approximately a thousand wide, a thousand pixels wide. Leave the border to show for now. We can remove that at the later date and click OK. Now, the table is there, but we can't see it. The only way right now that you know the table is there, there it is, there's our table. And if you look in the code, you'll see that you've got a table tag here. 
and that's where the table starts and finishes. And what we want to do with the table is ensure that it's aligned centrally. So what we want to do is click outside the table, go down to your HTML area, and see if we can align this table centrally. We want it to be centered, so there you go, it's centered. So in order to make the gallery, we need to pull this down, so draw it down, and bring it down to create an area for the main display and an area for the thumbnails. So you also need to merge these three columns, these three boxes. So highlight the boxes by dragging across the three boxes and going down to the icon here at the bottom of the property inspector. Um, and if your property inspector is not showing, just simply go to Windows and ensure that there's a tick by properties. Your property inspector will now show. So you highlight these three boxes and then you go down to merge cells and that cell now becomes one. So this is where your main image will sit and this is where your thumbnails will sit so that you've got an image gallery. If your code is getting in the way, just draw the window down. So what you want to do, just have a nice little area. So that's stage two. Now what we need to now do is to put the images in. So this is for the big image, this is for the thumbnail, thumbnail and thumbnail. I think the thumbnails are approximately 200 by 200. So click in a cell and go down to the property inspector and you will see that there's a width and a height. So what you want to do is ensure that the widths are approximately 200. Or the height, actually. Let's make the heights all 200. So simply highlight the three cells, drag across them, go down to height, and make them 200. That way it gives it some consistency. Just click away from there, and you've got your thumbnail boxes ready for their images. So what we're now going to do is insert the images. So click in the first thumbnail box, Ensure that the image is centered horizontally and vertically. When you click in it, go down to the property inspector. Make sure you're on CSS. Horizontal, center, vertical, middle. And do that for each of the cells to ensure that the image sits properly. Go down to the property inspector, CSS. Horizontal, center, vertical, middle. And do that again for the last one. CSS, property inspector, horizontal, center, vertical, middle. So now you can insert your images. Click. Now if your images are outside the image image um, file that for your for your site, don't worry. On saving it, it will bring it in. So before we actually insert the images, let's save the file so that it's actually saved within your site. So go to File, Save As. Make sure you're in the right folder, Gallery Show, and then simply give it a name. This is the gallery. Once you've done that, click Save. Now, if you've done it correctly, you should be able to see in your site folder the gallery file, and that's what's exactly here. Now you're ready to insert your images. So click in the first thumbnail box, Insert Image. Now go and find your images. I downloaded some images earlier, and I hope they're still on here. Yeah, I hope so. Um, the first image I want to download is this one. It's 200 by 200. There it goes. That's the first thumbnail. Click in the second box. Insert the second thumbnail. Image. Go to where the images are. Now I think, I hope I have another thumbnail. 200 by 200. That's another one. 200 by 200. Click it open, so that's one thumbnail, two thumbnails, and click in the third box to insert the third thumbnail. Now I'm going to have to do a little bit of a jig here, because some of my thumbnails I used earlier, so they're hiding somewhere else. So excuse me a minute while I try and get them together. Right, the third thumbnail I want is this one, so let me do a Command A, Command Copy. I'm going to drop them back into Downloads. Command paste. Uh, replace. Replace. Okay, I'm going to just replace all of them so that I can actually use them. So the third image I need is probably this one. I hope it's 200 by 200. And 
let's minimize that. So click in the third box, go to insert image, go to downloads where your images may have been downloaded or to whichever file you put them in, look for it and insert it. So I've got my three thumbnails, one, two, three already. So what I now need to do is put in the main image that should be there, the first main image. So the first thumbnail is this one. So the first main image will correspond to that. But again, when you click into that box, ensure that you go down to the property inspector, make sure you're on CSS and horizontally center and vertically center. Once you've done that, you're now ready to insert the final image before we now do some um, image swapping. So image, you've got to find the image that is similar to this one. So make sure you go into downloads, look for the larger version of that image, which is this one here. Click it and click open. Ooh, that's a bit big. That image is a wee tad bit big. So I'm going to try and bring it down a bit. <coughs> let's try and resize that down. It's a wee bit big for what I want. So let's take it down and bring this back up. Right, that's better. So that is the layout for my gallery at the moment. That's what it's looking like. So this image, so what we want to happen is when you move over this image, this, this should appear. When you move over this image, this image should change to show the bigger version of this. And when you move over this image, this image should change to show the bigger version of this. But that's the second stage. We've set up the gallery and it's ready now for image swapping. Right, we've now completed the layout for the images. We have one more thing that we need to do before we can actually start automating the process. We need to identify what each image is. So the first thing is, um, click on the first image, the big image, make sure it's selected, and move down into the property inspector, which is down here, and give this image an ID. So we're gonna call this big, big image one. Okay, so this first one is big image one. In the same way you identify that, you need to also identify the thumbnail. So click on the first thumbnail and call that one thumb one. So that's the first thumbnail image. Click on the second one and give it an ID in the property inspector thumb two. And then click on the third one and give it an identity thumb three. Those identities are going to be very important when we now try to automate this, the gallery so that as we move over each image, the big image will change. So now that that's been completed, the next stage is to go up to Windows, which is up here, and look for behaviors. So go up to the Windows, windows in the menu and click Behaviors. Now a behavior window will open, and that's what you see right here. Now, by using this behavior window, we're going to be able to create an effect that as we move over each image, this image will change. So click on the first image, first thumbnail, which is this one here. Once you click on it, click in the behaviors box in the first um, box on the first row. Now click the down arrow and a whole load of actions appear. What we're looking for is on mouse over, we want this big image to change. So on mouse over, in the second box, click, and now you're going to add what you want to happen. So click here, the plus sign, that's here. And the behavior we want to do is we want to swap the image. Now this is where you now have to think a little bit. What you need to understand is what you want to happen on mouse over the thumbnail. What we want to happen is that the big image, one, must change to another big image. So what we want to happen is image, big image one. So this is big image one. Select the label for big image one. What, what do we want? We want to set that to big image two. So I think the second image, if I go to downloads, is the guy playing the guitar. So we want it to go to big image two. Big image two, which is the guy playing the guitar. If I can find that, I hope I can find that. Which should be this one here. So click it. So what this is actually saying is, when I mouse over thumbnail one, big image one will change to 
Big Image 2, which is the guy playing the guitar. Leave a tick in preload images, but remove the tick next to restore images on mouse out. Once you've done that, click OK. So on mouse over, we're going to swap images. Now we won't see anything with the first one, so we're going to do the second one to ensure. Oh, that was wrong actually. Let me go back and amend the swap because that wasn't quite right. On image one, on clicking first thumbnail, image one, the actual <coughs> image we want to show is the same one, not the different one because it's the same image. So I click that. Correct. Let me correct myself. Make sure there's a tick in preload image. Remove the tick by restore images on mouse out and click OK. So that one, you won't see any change. Click thumbnail two and go through the similar similar process. Click in the first cell. Click the action you are looking to um, set, which is on mouse over. Click in the second box and select the behavior you want to show. So you want a swap image. The swap image box comes up. What image do you want to change? It's the big image. So big image one. And what do you want to change it to? Browse. And click what you want to change it to, which is the guy playing the guitar. Click open, click OK. Um, make sure there's a tick in preload images. Take the tick off, restore images on mouse out, and click OK. Let's save this and see if it actually works. So file save. Close the behavior window, and let's have a look at, to see if it actually works. Now to preview whatever you're doing, there's a preview button down here. I like to preview it in the browser because it makes it easier. So click there. OK, there's no browser. You're kidding. Okay, we're going to have a problem there. So go to here, go to design and go to live. Now this is the live view. This means that whatever, this is what it should look like in reality. So what I said was on image, mouse over image one, sorry, mouse over image one, nothing. Mouse over image two, it changes. So that means it's working. That's exactly what we want to happen. A simple mouse over effect. The images change corresponding to the thumbnail you're on. So let's go back to design view and finish off. So we need to just do the last one. So again, you need to open up your behavior window, click window, go down to behaviors. The behaviors window pops up. Make sure you're clicked on the thumbnail, the last thumbnail, which is three. Click in the first box, select the behavior you're looking to set, which is on mouse over. Click in the second box and add the behavior you want to occur, which is an image swap. Which image? It's big image one. You want to change it to big image three. So big image three is the one to do with SW Dylan. Go back into my downloads, find the image, and set it. Ensure that there's a tick in preload images. Remove the tick and restore images on mouse out, otherwise it will disappear, and click OK. Once you've clicked OK, close the behavior box, save it. Save all. Uh, hold on. Save, and then go into Live View or view it in a browser and check that it's actually working. So, what do we expect to see? We expect that on going over each of the images, the big image should change. So, if I go over the first one, it shouldn't change because it's the same image. But if I go over the second one, it changes to the second image, and if I go over the third one, it changes to the third image. And that's exactly what we want for a simple gallery effect. Um, try it yourselves and let me know if there are any issues. Thank you.